I have spent my entire career in the software industry, well over a decade as a professional developer, two degrees in computer science, many years in tech product management, even an MBA from MIT. Heck, we have three other team members here with a software development background. So today, we are returning to our roots to bring you this guide of the best laptops for programming. I'm going to first walk you through what to look for when shopping for the ideal software development laptop. Then at the end, I'm going to present you with the laptops that you can buy right now that best embody this. And since new laptops are constantly being released, make sure to check out our website, specifically the best programming laptops list. That will be kept up to date with the latest laptops well after this video is published. Now, stating the obvious, there are many different types of coders working in very different ways. For example, some coders just use their laptop to remote into a more powerful desktop or server. Their laptop needs are more basic. This video focuses on the most flexible laptop for coding, giving you the option to run your full development and testing environments locally. And if you can't afford a laptop that meets our criteria, do not let that prevent you from having a wonderful career as a software developer. You can code on almost any computer. I learned on an Apple IIe. You're just going to have to make some sacrifices to bring down the laptop's price. And big thanks to today's video sponsor, Ugreen. Ugreen makes a range of premium laptop chargers that are extremely well built. At the top end is their Nexo Pro lineup. Each of them has a variety of different charging ports so you can charge all your devices at the same time. They support the latest fast charging technologies and since they are GAN chargers, they are significantly smaller and lighter than traditional ones. We've been using these in the office for some time now and love them. The Nexo Pro 100 is very small and compact for the 100 watts of power it delivers. It charges a MacBook Pro 14 from 0 to 50% within 27 minutes. With one of these chargers, I never have to stress about battery life. So treat your laptop to a Nexo Pro, links below. The first choice when it comes to picking a laptop for software development is what screen size to buy. Seeing a large amount of code on screen is going to make you more effective as a developer. For example, you can see the bigger picture of the algorithm you are working on, or more easily discover the root cause of an issue when browsing through a large log file. If you have to constantly scroll to see what's going on or drill into certain pieces of code, you'll be less efficient, and you'll often forget the details of what you were previously looking at. This means you'll want a laptop with a screen large enough to get real work done. But most software developers that I know love the freedom to work in coffee stores or at different locations in a co-working space. Even corporate software developers often carry their laptops to meetings, so portability matters. Therefore, I recommend a somewhat light and compact laptop with a 16-inch display, ideally no heavier than 5 pounds. If you value portability even more, that's at the expense of productivity, go for a laptop with a smaller display of 14 or 14.5 inches, that is under 3.5 pounds. That screen is still large enough to see a decent amount of code. But it is not just the size of the screen that determines how much code you can see on it. It's also the screen's brightness and resolution. The higher the resolution, the crisper the code looks and the more visible it will be at smaller font sizes. High brightness also helps with this, particularly in brightly lit environments. For example, if your screen is glossy and the display's brightness is not high enough, it will not be able to overpower reflections, and that will be distracting. Therefore, I recommend a screen with 210 pixels per inch or higher and a display brightness of 500 nits if the screen is glossy. If it's a matte, non-glossy panel, you can drop that brightness requirement down to around 400 nits. When it comes to the laptop's processor, most modern ones are powerful enough for coding, but there are some gotchas to be aware of. Firstly, the type of laptop that you can buy may be dictated by your employer or school. They could require certain applications or environments that only run on specific hardware. So make sure to check with them before buying. But if you do have a choice, here is a general rule of thumb. For front-end web development, you can code on any laptop, Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, or Apple. Those coding for native iOS applications, you will have to buy a Mac as you'll need to be able to compile Apple-specific code. For those coding native applications for the new breed of Qualcomm laptops, you'll want a Qualcomm laptop. On the flip side, those coding native Android applications, you'll want to avoid a Qualcomm laptop, as it just doesn't run all that well on that hardware. For those doing AI ML development, playing video games, or even creating games, you'll want a laptop with an Intel or AMD processor and dedicated NVIDIA graphics. That being said, on AI and ML specifically, you'll need an NVIDIA GPU if you plan to train your models locally. If you're only going to do this on remote servers, you can skip this requirement. For those doing back-end development, Intel, AMD, or Apple laptops all work well. But 
Intel and AMD laptops have an advantage. You can run Linux on these laptops without the need of a virtual machine. If you're unaware, a lot of back-end code powering things like the internet runs on Linux servers. If you run a development environment that matches your production one, you can avoid a lot of nasty surprises during a code deployment. On Qualcomm laptops specifically, we caution you on buying one for software development right now. Many specialist applications don't run well. Since you don't know what you'll be coding in the future or what your needs will be, it's safer to just avoid one. Moving along. When it comes to memory, you're going to hate me for saying this. It depends on what you are coding. No YouTuber can give you a precise answer unless they know exactly what you are doing on your laptop. For example, if you're testing a very memory intensive application and you need to run multiple instances to ensure concurrency controls work, you'll need a hell of a lot of memory. Same goes if you need to run virtual machines on your laptop to test an application. As a developer, you should err on the side of caution and buy a laptop that will last you for many years to come. The more memory, the better. The absolute minimum for a new programming laptop should be 16 gig, but a general safe amount is 32, so try to get that if you can. When it comes to storage, again, highly dependent. If you plan to download a large production database for debugging purposes, you'll want a large amount of storage. 512 gig of storage will probably work for students. One terabyte though should really be the minimum for professionals, but again, more is better. Now, if you are deciding between upgrading the memory or storage on your new laptop, get more memory. Storage is often upgradable after you buy, and even if it isn't, you can buy an external drive. With memory, if you don't have enough, there is rarely anything you can do about it. Alright, stating the obvious, as a coder, you'll be typing on the keyboard a lot. You want one that is a joy to use, very comfortable. Plus, you'll want a standard layout. There is nothing more distracting than reaching for a key and pressing the wrong one. When it comes to the trackpad, you want a good one here too. Accurate enough for placing the cursor in specific locations within the code. You really don't want to have to rely on carrying an external mouse with you. Other than this, coding is a brain power intensive task. When you're in the zone, you'll want to minimize distractions. That means you want a laptop that doesn't feel overly warm to the touch. And if you are coding in a quiet environment or one without headphones on, you won't want to hear fan noise. That being said, on this last point, many coders that I know do code in a louder environment, so this may be a nice to have. Lastly, battery life. Most modern laptops do not have good battery life if you use them for high performing tasks like coding. If battery life is important to you, you should buy a MacBook. They are still by far the best in this department. The next best would be to get a laptop with a large battery that is powered by AMD's latest Zen 5 chips or one from Qualcomm. Lunar Lake, Intel's newest processor, which is also called Core Ultra Series 2, is also meant to be pretty good. But here's the thing, I would not rely on your laptop to last a full day of coding when on battery. Plus, using the laptop consistently when on battery will degrade the battery. So I recommend buying a small, lightweight USB-C charger to carry with you regardless of which laptop you buy. And on that note, check out those Ugreen Nexode Pro chargers that I mentioned earlier in this video linked below. Alright, class is over, let's get into the fun stuff. Here are the top laptops for coding that you can buy right now. We're going to start with the 16 inch laptops and move down to the smaller 14 inch ones. The Yoga Prana 9 is one of the best programming laptops out there. It gives you everything that most coders want for a very reasonable price. And it doesn't have major gotchas. You get a stunning, bright, high resolution, fast refresh rate mini LED display. You get Intel's Core Ultra 9 processor. While not the most power efficient out there, it is plenty powerful for coding. And since it's an Intel processor, it has broad application compatibility. The keyboard on this laptop is a delight to type on. The laptop never gets distractingly warm to the touch and its fan noise is minimal. You really only hear it when you're hitting the processor or graphics hard. And on that note, it has dedicated graphics. In the USA, you can get it with an RTX 4050 or 4060, which is powerful enough to enjoy some solid gaming on or do some video editing on. But one of the things that makes this laptop so special is its price. The model with the RTX 4050 has an MSRP of $1,700 and the RTX 4060 comes in at $1,900. But these frequently go on sale for a lot less. And each of them comes with my recommended configuration of 32 gig of memory and one terabytes of storage. So you get everything you need out of the box. Its negatives are that its chassis does look quite dated, it's heavy and chunky for a non-gaming laptop, and its battery life is nothing to write home about. Buy the Yoga Prona 9 if you want the best all-round software development experience for under $2,000. Next, the MacBook Pro 16 is an absolutely awesome laptop for coding. It's an all-round premium device. 
Everything on this laptop is very good to best in class. It has the number one display for looking at code, although on paper it does have similar specs to the Yoga Pro 9 i, you will be able to see more content on the Mac. That is due to the way macOS renders fonts. Small text is more legible on it. Other than this, you get a comfortable keyboard, the best trackpad and speakers out there, and a good webcam. It has super powerful processor options, and since Apple's M series of chips are the most power efficient out there, you'll feel very little heat, rarely hear fan noise, and get the best battery life. Its main downsides is its price. The config I'd recommend with the M3 Pro chip, ideally 36 gig of memory and one terabytes of storage, will set you back a whopping $3,100. Now, before you get completely turned off by that, you can save money by buying the 18 gig of memory config or even one of last year's models. The M2 version, still very good, and you're unlikely to notice a difference. Now, its other downsides are that it doesn't run many AAA games, Linux support for its hardware is limited, and you will need to use a dongle if you want to plug in USB A devices. Overall, buy the MacBook Pro 16 if you can afford the most premium coding experience that money can buy, and you're okay with those downsides. Now, if you want a great alternative to the Yoga Pro 9, check out the ProArt P16. It solves many of the downsides of that laptop. It's more premium and it looks better. It is also significantly more compact and lighter, making it more portable. Plus, unlike the Yoga Pro 9, you get AMD's latest Zen 5 processor inside. This means you get very strong performance, hear very little fan noise, it doesn't get warm to the touch, and it has better battery life. And in the USA, the ProArt can be had with better specifications. Up to 64 gig of memory, two terabytes of storage, and an RTX 4070. Now, even though this takes it from its entry price of around $1,900 to $2,700, it's still massively cheaper than a comparably specced MacBook Pro. The main downside of this laptop is its screen. While it is a stunning 4K Plus panel that is insanely crisp for looking at code on, it only refreshes at 60 Hz, and its brightness is disappointing at 360 nits. So, Buy the ProArt P16 if you want the best portability in a 16-inch coding laptop and you're mainly using it indoors in a dimmer environment, or you like to run the screen at lower brightness levels. Now, if the downsides of the ProArt's display are too much for you, and I totally get that, yet you still want a very portable 16-inch programming laptop, take a look at its gaming sibling, the Safaris G16. The G16 has very similar pros, but it does give you that fast refresh rate display, and it is slightly brighter. It also can be had with more powerful NVIDIA graphics. However, for coding, I don't think the G16 is quite as good as the ProArt. The G16's lower resolution 2560x1600 panel means code just will not look as crisp as on the ProArt's 4K Plus display, even factoring in the small improvement in brightness. Furthermore, the G16's keyboard feels lower travel and is less comfortable, and the G16 feels a little warmer to the touch. Overall, buy the Zafaris G16 if you want an excellent coding experience in a portable laptop and gaming is a big priority for you. Now, if you want a cheaper 16-inch coding laptop, get the IdeaPad 5 Pro 16. It is a very compact and portable laptop with an excellent keyboard. The screen is more than good enough for coding, however, it isn't as high resolution nor has as wide a color gamut as many of the more expensive laptops that I've mentioned. You also give up a lot of graphics power, which you may or may not need, and it doesn't look as pretty. But for around $1,000, it does deliver great value for software developers. Let's now move on to smaller and more portable laptops. We're going to start with the MacBook Pro 14. Its display is phenomenal for coding, allowing you to see more code on screen than any other laptop this size. This is due to ticking all the boxes I mentioned earlier, plus macOS's excellent font rendering. This laptop is also incredibly powerful for its size, yet it doesn't have fan noise, doesn't have heat you feel, and has exceptional battery life. Plus, the whole laptop is just premium. Well built, best speakers, best trackpad, good keyboard, and excellent webcam. Its main downsides are that it is expensive, it is fairly heavy for a laptop with a display this size, and it doesn't have USB-A ports, which is inconvenient. Buy the MacBook Pro 14 if you can afford the best programming experience in a super portable laptop, and you don't need to play the latest Windows-only AAA games. I recommend getting the M3 Pro 12-core model with 18GB of RAM and 1TB of storage, and if you can afford it, upping the memory to 36GB. On the flip side, if you want to save money, buy one of last year's still excellent M2 Pro models. Check out our website for where to find one. Alright, 
If you want a much cheaper coding laptop that gives you all the best coding components but cuts back a bit on creature comforts, check out the new VivaBook S14 with Zen 5. It comes in at US$1,200 and it has a fantastic bright high resolution display. You get enough memory at 24 gigs and one of AMD's excellent new Ryzen Zen 5 processors, which I've already talked a lot about in this video. The main downsides of this laptop is that it is less premium than the others I've mentioned. For example, its trackpad is mediocre, its webcam is pretty bad, and its keyboard is very average. Its brightness, although 400 nits, which is decent, its screen is glossy, so not ideal for working in a very bright environment. Overall, buy the VivaBook S14 if you want a very portable programming laptop at a very reasonable price. Now, if you want to play some serious games on a portable coding laptop, I have some bad news for you. We have every 14-inch gaming laptop, and shoving high-performance components in a small laptop, it just doesn't work that well. You either get heat, fan noise, or throttled performance. Here are some of our favourites, though. The Asus Sapphirus G14 is premium, it's very lightweight, and meets a lot of my requirements, but it constantly feels warm to the touch. Lenovo's Legion Slim 514 and Asus Predator Helios Neo 14 have larger 14.5-inch displays, which I like. They also handle the heat a bit better, as they are bigger laptops with more airflow. But they are heavy. In fact, they weigh around the same as the 16-inch Pro Art that I already talked about. So I definitely recommend buying that over one of these. Then you have HP's premium filling Omen Transcend 14, which doesn't have any of the downsides of the other small gaming laptops that I just talked about. It remains cool to the touch, it's quiet and portable. Its big issue though is that its RTX graphics are severely underwatered to achieve that result. You will have to pick your poison when it comes to small programming laptops that are also very good for gaming. Finally, honourable mention to the Framework laptop. The entire laptop is fully upgradable. The swappable ports in particular are an absolute standout, both the variety of ports available and how fast they are. They also just launched a new high resolution fast refresh rate display that delivers immense clarity. Great for looking at small fonts all day, and it also solves fractional scaling on Linux. In fact, the Framework team is absolutely dedicated to their Linux support. Now, given the incredible upsides of the Framework laptop, there are many downsides that go along with it. Its screen is small for a programming laptop, its single fan cooling solution is subpar, it looks and feels very dated, kind of like buying a laptop from three years ago, and it is pretty pricey. Overall, buy the Framework laptop if you value upgradability, sustainability, and excellent Linux support above everything else. Just buy the older AMD model, not the new Intel Core Ultra one. It's a lot cheaper and is almost as good. You can always upgrade it later on, as it's a Framework laptop. Well. That's it for our list. Make sure to check out our website, specifically the best programming laptops list, as it will be kept up to date well after this video goes live. Now, since this video was really about the best programming laptops, I've only recommended ones that cost $1,000 or more. You can find cheaper laptops on our website, but if you want me to do a dedicated video on cheaper programming laptops, let me know with a comment below. YouTuber Shtick Time, get subscribed, smash the like button, and share the channel with your friends. Not only does it help us grow, but it makes my dearest mother very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day, and we will catch you later.